Friday folks, I'm Mike with River King Outdoors and your Friday fishing report. First we have a little bit of housekeeping to do, but we're going to run through a fishing report with Willow Beach, uh, Cottonwood out of Lake on Lake Mojave, Princess Cove and Catherine's Landing area on Lake Mojave, and also the river in Bullhead City and Laughlin, Nevada on the Colorado River below Davis Dam. I'm also going to go over the baits at the very end that we're using and show you the examples that we're using again that uh, everybody seemed to like that. So instead of just talking about the baits, we're gonna show you the baits. Uh, we are also going to have at the end of the report, we're gonna have the weather report and forecast for the next week or the next few days to kind of give you guys a heads up. There's a little bit of volatile things going on. And, uh, but first we're gonna start with a little bit of housekeeping here. Uh, we do advertise a few things, so please uh, bear with us. That's why we're doing these reports. You listen to a little bit of advertising, we'll give you a little bit of info. So first is we do have a cast and blast all-inclusive trip at our waterfront lodge here on the Colorado River. That is November 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th. That's three days and three nights of fishing and waterfowl hunting for ducks and geese. So how that works is you will stay with us for three days in the waterfront lodge. All your meals are included, uh, hunting or and or fishing. You can choose to hunt all three days. You can choose to fish all three days. You can choose to hunt one day, fish two days, or hunt two days, fish one day, any combination. Whatever's best for you, we'll customize that trip for you again. That is November 8th. You show up on the evening of November 8th, hunt and or fish on the 9th, 10th, and 11th. You can see pricing and get your booking info at this website here. Next, we also have a all-inclusive three-day, three-night dedicated waterfowl hunt that is for ducks and geese. So we are hunting only on this trip. There's four spots available on this and that is November 22nd through the 25th. So you arrive on the evening of the 22nd, hunt the 23rd, 24th, and 25th. We also have some guided fishing trips left. As you're gonna see right here, these are the last of the dates that we have for September and October. We are extremely full and have very few dates left. So if you're looking to fish with us or get on one of those dedicated Willow Beach trips, um, I think we do have a, two of those trips left. We go up there on Thursdays. But again, here's the dates here. And also you can get your information on how to get in touch with us and booking and pricing and all that great stuff on all of our different fishing packages. We have lots of different fishing packages, including overnight trips, one and a half day trips, two day trips, and three day trips, all inclusive, all meals, lodging, fishing, gear, live bait, all of that stuff included. So we've got a lot of different options. So visit the website here and come on out. We'd love to see you. Okay, let's get into the fishing. So we're gonna start off up at Willow Beach. We were up there yesterday and the bite was so, so. Um, there was a few big fish that were caught uh, a lot of these fish were boiling on the trout, which was a little bit rare to see. A lot of these bigger fish were crashing on the surface, and we got ours on top water poppers, giant saltwater poppers, as a matter of fact, the ones that I painted myself, and we'll show you that at the uh, end of at the end of the video. Some other dudes were getting them on swim baits. So basically, it was a swim bait bite yesterday. We did throw quite a few different jerk baits to no avail, everything was on swim baits yesterday. And so we, I, I think that's gonna continue. There's a lot of bigger class fish up there. The bite wasn't all that great yesterday, but there was some good ones caught. So moving on down, uh, further down the lake in the Cottonwood area uh, on Lake Mojave, 
Smallmouth and largemouth bite has finally picked back up. Last week it was extremely slow. It has picked up over the last couple of days for the smallmouth and largemouth. The water temps have cooled down from approaching close to 90 and some spots even over 90. We found some we found some water temps in the low 80s and even the high 70s. If you can find those high 70s in those cooler waters, that's where you're gonna find your best bite. And the low 80s, but up from there, it's a sluggish bite if you're in that warmer water. Um, we were getting them on, and folks have been getting them on jigs, and drop shot has been the way to go. And since there's a lot of shad starting to show up, the six cents shad wake bait, which again, stay tuned till the end of this. I'm gonna go over the baits and show them to you. And now moving down in the Princess Cove and Catherine's Landing area, there has been some stripers being caught. Those fish are mainly being caught trolling A rigs or umbrella rigs. Again, we're gonna show you that at the end of the video. Um, and stripers, you know, in the four to five pound range on average is what's being caught. And then the smallmouth and largemouth bite on drop shot, drop shotting those straight robo worms in morning dawn. Uh, those seem to be the ticket. And we've been running a, a different type of those robo worms, straight, straight worms in uh, morning dawn. There's a fatter style worm that is available and we'll show you that at the end of the video. And also that wake bait has been working pretty good. Now, jigging, when you're jigging out there, whether it's Cottonwood or down in the Catherine Sanding and Princess Cove area, it's been in the deeper rises that are offshore on the main stem of the lake in about 20 to 35 feet of water. That's where we're finding them on the jig. There has been a few fish moving up shallow. Those large mouth are shallow up against the reeds. They are responding to the drop, both the drop shot and the uh, jig. And again, we're gonna show you the jig that's been working for us. And um, also that shad color six cents wake bait. Those have been the top three baits that are catching the smallmouth and largemouth up on the lake. Now moving down onto the river below Davis Dam in the Laughlin and Bullhead area. Man, the jerk bait bite is back. As you saw in the last video, we were really getting them on the soft baits and you know, with the with little ball head jigs that we showed you in the last video. Jerk bait bite is back. Love the jerk bait bite because it's pretty simple. You can switch from a bunch of different colors and your presentation is usually just the same working that jerk bait. Again, we're gonna show you the best color that uh, has been working for us lately out on the river. Um, and again, in, during the weather section here that you're gonna see at the very end of the video, we're gonna show you how to check river depths. Be very careful out there on the river. Um, the mornings, they have been keeping that river low down to one unit in the morning, so it can get very, very sketchy if you don't know the river. And remember the rule of thumb up here is if you don't know this river and you wanna get to know this section, wait till it's at least three units. We're gonna show you how to check three days in advance on what the river levels will be and at what times they're gonna go up. We're gonna show you how to read that chart in this video as well. Okay, folks, so stay tuned. We're gonna do the weather now and then we're gonna get into the baits. All right, folks, so starting off with the weather today, there is a lake wind advisory issued until 7 p.m. tonight. So I'm gonna caution everyone going out on Lake Mojave. It can get very dangerous out there. Last Sunday, there was a windstorm early in the morning and there was quite a few rescues out there. Uh, some of you watching this rescued some people and uh, yeah, our trip was cut short. There was some really big waves. So again, take these wind advisories very, very seriously. Okay, and here we go with the weather report for this weekend and the forecast coming up for early next week. Okay, so let's start off with the weather here. Okay, so today, Friday, is the big day. Um, as you can see here, um, we're gonna start off with the wind. So we've got, this morning, the light and variable winds. Right now, it's the 10, as you can see here, it's a 10 to 15 miles an hour. But as the day progresses, progresses things are gonna get a little more windy as we get into this later afternoon you can see here we're going to have wind gusts with this you can see the gradient turning dark purple coming out of that southwest direction 
That's 30 mile an hour plus wind gust. That is going to make that lake extremely dangerous. I caution anyone to be out there today unless you really know what you're doing. And even then, it's gonna be pretty miserable. Again, we're gonna have sustained winds here in that 10 to 20 mile an hour zone. But you're gonna, again, you're gonna have periods of wind that are going to hit, like you can see here in that 30 mile an hour range. Temperatures, we're gonna be looking at a high of about 102 out there today. Um, currently temperatures are 88 degrees and we're gonna get up to that 102 about four or five o'clock. Okay, moving on to Saturday. So we're gonna move into Saturday. Um, Saturday morning, we're gonna have light winds. As you can see here, the gradient here is very low, zero to five miles an hour. This is at, a, look at 8 a.m. We're gonna have a low of 77 degrees tomorrow morning. And getting further out in the middle of the day, let's get out here at about 12 noon. Those winds are gonna increase up to 20 miles an hour. And again, look at these gusts. These gusts are gonna be in the 25 to 30, not quite as crazy as Friday, but it is going to be very gusty. Again, use very, very much caution out there. Again, getting into four o'clock, you're gonna see some gusts in the 30 mile an hour range, as you can see here. Temperatures, they are getting nicer this week. Um, so we're gonna go off to the temperatures here. And you can see Saturday, this is at 8 a.m. It's gonna be 80 degrees, moving around one o'clock up to that 98 degrees and hitting that 100 mark, possibly by 5 p.m., but we're going to have to stretch it to get there. Okay, moving on to Sunday. Sunday, we're gonna start off with the wind, as usual, because that is one of the most important things for fishing. In the morning, we're going to, as you can see here, zero to five miles an hour coming out of the west, very light. 8 a.m., it's going to pick up uh, a little bit and drop back down after eight zero. It's gonna be a really nice day. Uh, as far as the wind goes, it's gonna stay under that 10 miles an hour. And let's look at the gust and see what it's doing in the afternoon. Same deal, we're only gonna have gusts in that 10 to 15 mile an hour on Sunday. All right, let's look at the temperatures for Sunday starting at 8 a.m. The temps starting off at 80 degrees and noon, around noon, we're gonna be at push, almost pushing 90 at 89 degrees, go to 6 p.m. Looks like we're gonna stick around on that 90 degree weather on Sunday. Very great day to be out there to fish. Sunday's your day. Get out there on Sunday. Spend some time with the family on Saturday. Sunday is your day. Moving on to Monday. Monday, the temps again, starting off at 8 a.m. Excuse me, that's 3 a.m. Let's go over into about 8 a.m. Here we go. 85 degrees in the morning, 9 a.m. In the afternoon, it's going to get up to 100. Let's check that wind starting at about 7 a.m. Looks like we're in that zero to five mile an hour range, barely blowing a breeze out of the north. And that wind should shift and start coming out of the west here as the day goes on. Again, very light winds on, an, on uh, Monday. Now, later in the afternoon, we'll be coming out of the south at zero to five with wind gusts into that 10 to 12 miles an hour. Monday looks like another great day to fish. Let's get into Tuesday. Let's start off with the winds on Tuesday. Again, low winds in the morning. That's 4 a.m. Moving up to 8 a.m. Still in that zero to five, maybe eight miles an hour. Moving up to 1 p.m., we're gonna get in that 15 to 20 in that later afternoon. So if you're gonna get out there, that's coming out of the south. So if you're gonna get out there on Tuesday, make sure it's early in the morning. We're gonna have a high of about 106, 107. Um, let's check those temperatures as they go throughout the day. So yep, so you can see here, 106 is gonna be our high on Tuesday. And again, let's go ahead and hit up Wednesday. Wednesday with the wind. Again, this can change. The wind always changes coming out of the south on Wednesday, 4 a.m. It's gonna start off at zero to five. Still staying there at 5 a.m., 9 a.m. We're gonna get into that 10 to 12 miles an hour. 95 degrees at 10 o'clock in the morning. We're gonna reach 100 by 
two o'clock in the afternoon. Let's check those temps. There we go. 100 degrees by two o'clock in the afternoon. Wind gusts on Wednesday look to be in that 25 mile an hour range out of the south. So it looks like your best two days to fish this week are going to be Sunday and Monday as far as it goes for the winds. Again, pay attention to that small craft warning that's going on out there on Lake Mojave for today and tomorrow. Looks a little bit sketchy. Actually, looks a lot sketchy. I'm not out today. We canceled our trip today due to that wind, and we will not be on that water today. We're going to see how tomorrow goes. Okay, stay tuned for the Davis Dam. We're going to show you folks how to read those water levels for the river to make sure you get some safe boating. All right, stay tuned. Okay, folks, so here we are for Davis Dam and how to read this chart. So the best way to get to this is just Google Davis Dam water release. And this will be the first thing you come up. You click on that link on the very top, and this is what will come up. So as you can see here, you've got your date. Today is Friday. Now you can see from 12 midnight last night, it's been one unit until six to 7 a.m. So these are approximate times. So that one dot shows one unit and it corresponds with the units. One dot is one unit, two, two dots is two units, three dots is three units. And you can see the cubic feet per second that's being released. One unit's about 4,500. Get pretty close to 9,000 at two units. And three units is up to that 13, 13 and a half thousand cubic feet per second. So what you want to do, one unit. I do not take my bass boat out on that river at all at one unit. I usually wait till about two units and that's me knowing this river and I've got literally thousands of trips down that river. We usually stick to the drift boats uh, when it's one unit, um, that way we can slide over the stuff and, and not have to worry about hitting anything. So how to read this. So you see where, again, this is for today. So some of this has already happened. So you see here, uh, six to seven AM, it'll switch. It, it stops being one unit and at 7 AM it starts to be two units. You want to give that a couple of hours before you actually see any length of the river that's gonna be deeper at two units. So if it's saying seven to eight, you're gonna to wanna to wait till nine before you actually see two units between, say, Big Bend State Park and the dam. So we'll use that as kind of your markers there. Once you get into that three units, so if I was to today, if I was to depend on it being three units to get out there, um, and it showed me 10 to 11. I'm going to mosey on down to the launch about 12, 30, 1 o'clock to be safe. And then I know between that stretch between Big Bend State Park and the dam in front of the casinos, all that good stuff, I'm going to be looking at an actual water depth of the three units. Now, I'm going to caution everybody. This is not full safe, so don't be sending me a message telling me you tore your top prop up because you'll tear your prop up at five units. You still got to pay attention to what's going on out there. Don't just hop on the river and peg your boat and go, because I'm telling you, you will hit something. Take it slow. Your first time, you'll be able to see the water's very clear, where the deep spots are, where the shallow spots are, and get to know it. But if it's your first time out there taking your boat, a prop-driven boat on that river, this rule of thumb is usually wait till it's three units and give it a couple of hours after that. So you can see here's the corresponding times, here's the corresponding units. Give it a couple hours, take it slow, get to know it. There are still shallow sections at, at three units, there's still plenty of stuff to hit. However, it's doable if you go slow, pay attention to where you're going, wear your life vest, even I, I do. Now, I literally fish for a living I wear my life vest every time I'm underway on that river for a variety of reasons. The jet skis can get crazy on the weekends. You can hit something. You've got people drinking and partying. They can hit your boat. If I'm underway on that river, myself and my clients are wearing life preservers. Even myself, when I go out on a personal fishing trip, I wear an inflatable life preserver at all times Unless I'm stopped in a little nook or cranny there, then I'll take it off usually. And then in the wintertime, I'll leave that thing on all day long. I don't even take it off. Okay, so Monday, or excuse me, Friday. Looks like uh, about 10 o'clock uh, by the time you're seeing this. It should be at three units. 
And that's what you're gonna see there. So we're gonna scroll on down to Saturday. Kind of a carbon copy at 7 a.m. It's gonna start going up to two units. And at 10 a.m. it's gonna start going up to three units. And early evening, that's gonna get up to four units at 6 p.m. Sunday. Here we go, more of the same it looks like. Oh, actually a little, I'm wrong. It's gonna go to two units at 5 a.m. And at 8 a.m. it's gonna go up to three units. So Sunday, that if you wanna fish the river early Sunday morning, that is your best window right there. You've got the water coming up a little bit earlier. You've got little to no wind early in the morning. Sundays are typically a lot less crowded out there on the river than Saturdays. That's your day. If you want to go explore that river and go fishing, get after it. Sunday evening. If you're a little sketched on that, Sunday evening is a great time to go fish that river because you're already going to have three units in the middle of the day. And then at three o'clock, it's going to go up to four units. That's a good bite window right there. That little bit of raising up of the, of the, of the water levels. I mean, I'm stuttering already. I'm getting excited. So Sunday afternoon into the evening, that's a good time to go. It's going to go from 13,000 cubic feet per second all the way up to almost 19,000 cubic feet per second. That's going to trigger a bite. That's a good window. Same with this morning when you're going two to three because you're almost doubling the water flow. These striped bass really like that current. All right, let's see if we got a Monday here. Yes, we do. Monday, one unit until 7 a.m. and it's gonna start to go up to two. 8 a.m., three units, and staying at three pretty much the entire day. So again, this is just reiterating, if you're going to be fishing the river or looking to fish it this weekend, Sunday and Monday are your two best days. Get out there and get some striped bass. Again, I caution this. You are responsible for yourself out there on the river. I can only show you how we read the river and it's up to you to stay safe and what your comfort level is. But again, use caution out on that river. We see people wrecking their bottom ends and getting hurt every single weekend. We don't wanna see that happen to you. So take it easy, take it slow get to know it and most of all enjoy that river enjoy your family out there and catch some fish bam we'll see you soon. instant hookup so this has been working we got two hookups yesterday uh with this big popper and brought one to the boat um good fish very fun getting them on the top water those bigger striped bass that was that was pretty awesome uh now also for top water what we've been using out on the lake um, early morning, the bite, a little sneaky thing here for the, uh, for the small mouth and large mouth. And we've also used these same uh, topwater baits for stripers on the river. But for about that first half hour to 45 minutes of daylight up there on Lake Mojave, there is a topwater bite. It's very short window, but you can get some pretty big fish. So this is one of our baits that I made quite a, a while back and it's very, very similar to the Zara Spook. It's pretty much the same thing. So if you can find a Zara Spook with some green and black on it, this is a frog pattern that I have on the Zara, Zara Spook style blank that was painted to kind of resemble a frog. This one's really beat up, caught quite a few fish on this thing. But yeah, so this style of bait has been working. Now, um, they have these baits, these Zara Spooks. These are working really good as well, especially for the striped bass on the river. And this is just the, the Haydens. You can get these, uh, the Zara Spook. You can get these at Walmart. I think they're only about five bucks. And uh, these are working great. It's basically the same as this. And you just walk these baits across the top and that top water bite on the river it can happen anytime, all day long. You just get into a block of fish that want a top water bite, and then you know sooner or later you're catching one after another after another. All right, so yeah, look at getting something like this. Now the I'm gonna go a little bit, still kind of top water, goes kind of under top water. This is the six cents wake bait in shad color. And you can see the lip here; it keeps it just under. Now again, I have not used this bait in probably over a year. And I have a bunch of these in various colors. This color seemed to be the one, this shad color that's got this darker green on it. Um, this is not a, a bass color. When you look at it in person, it's more shaddish and this green is really grayish green. It's got a little dot here. This has been working on the lake. 
and on the river. So certain times, certain times today, you just gotta experiment, but we've caught quite a few fish in the past week on this bait. Very good bait to use. All right, now you hear a lot of guys trolling the A-rigs or umbrella rigs. Here's an example here. We don't do a whole lot of trolling. Um, I do more casting with this, but I do have some friends that have been catching quite a few striped bass trolling these A-rigs. Now there's one important thing. You can also refer to it as an umbrella rig. So when you hear guys referring to that, you know, and you don't see what it is for you new guys, that right there is an umbrella rig. Super important for Nevada and Arizona. You are only allowed to have a hook on two of these. So you can see these guys, no hook, no hook, no hook. I like to put a hook in the center one and the top one. And for me, I seem to get more hookups that way. But again, your fish going after five of those is gonna have a two and five chance <laughs> of, of getting a hook in its face. And when I gamble on that, I like the center one for sure and then the top one to have a hook. But that is an umbrella rig and these trolled in the deeper waters um, in the lake. And you're just gonna have to use your fish finder to find out where those striped bass are. But it's getting better and better and better for striped bass on Lake Mojave in the Catherine's Landing and Cottonwood Cove area. Last week, uh, as a matter of fact, up in Cottonwood Cove, um, near Cottonwood Cove in Arizona Bay, saw quite a few striper boils. So that is starting to, ha to happen up there in Arizona Bay. That's just north of the marina there on the Arizona side. All right, you heard me talking about jerk baits. Now, we make a ton of jerk baits and had in the past when we used to have the tackle store. Uh, we don't have the tackle store anymore. It's where we just run taxidermy out of now. Um, however, little tip, if you're near Bass Pro Shop or you can order these, these are the XPS, the Bass Pro Shop brand. I would stack these baits up against any of the name brand, more expensive baits that run you 20 to 25 bucks, even 15 bucks for these. These are $6 at Bass Pro Shop, six bucks. And the quality on these is incredible. You can get fast sink, slow sink, medium sink, deep dive, medium dive, all the different variations. I like to use the slow sink, uh, and, and then this flatter lip, not the straight down, but this fatter lip. Not sure what depth that lip means. I don't have the package anymore, but this is the one that's been working for us. It's kind of a grayish blue purple top, very light white bottom and clear sides. This thing has been hammering the striped bass in numbers on the river. All right, now for the drop shot, what we've been drop shotting uh, is that robo worm in morning dawn, the straight worm. You can see this profile is fatter. This has been getting me a lot more bites and I have been switching back and forth from the normal slender uh, drop shot worm. This one, the fatter one, I've been generating a lot more bites. Now, another one that has been working that I pulled, since I've been pulling some older baits out, and finding uh, some stuff's working. Stuff that I haven't gone to in a little while. This is another one. You can get these at Walmart. They still have them because after they were working, I went and bought a few more packs. This is the Zoom Super Salt Plum. Uh, Super Salt Plum in Cherry Seed. Now here's the package. Cherry Seed, this very slender, Worm here with the curly tail for drop shot. I refer to the nickname of these as cherry bombs. So if you ever watch one of our videos and you say, I'm gonna to toss a cherry bomb, that's this. That's not the name of this bait. Again, it's a super salt, super salt plum. I don't know why they have that name and then they do the color as cherry seed. So it's the zoom and this is what it is. Love this bait, caught a lot of fish in this bait lately. Uh, especially in the middle of the day. That's been a really good bait. Okay, now on to the jig. Now, um, this jig setup has been my go-to for about the last month out there on the lake. And what I've got on the front here is a Strike King football jig. 
And then it's got the weedless. Now what I do is I like to trim off about two thirds of these, uh, of the weed guard on there. I just feel like I get a little more bites and there's not really a whole lot to get hung up on unless you're really in the trees and you can pretty much bounce these over. But uh, I've got it in this olive green and rust color. And then I pair that up with this trailer. These are really, 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 really hard to find. Sometimes you can find these online. They're by depth. For you swim bait guys, you guys know that brand, but a lot, what a lot of people don't know is Depths make small finesse stuff as well. So for the trailer, and I love this name, the Death, the Death Aider Hog, four inch. And that is a craw trailer. And I play sometimes with this thing while I'm putting it on. I'll sometimes cut a little piece off. So if I want a smaller profile on there, or I leave it whole, and I have a bigger profile. This one I cut a little bit off, so you have not so big of a profile. Some of you guys like big profiles, you can cut it even a little bit more off to give you a shorter profile there. So, all right guys, um, again, that one is the Depths, Death Vader. Love that name, the four inch hog and this kind of really cool red. You're not gonna see a whole lot of uh, baits with that color. Depths, I mean, they, the quality of their stuff is good. These are really hard to find. If you can find them, grab them and hold on to them. I'm not even sure if they make these anymore, um, but you can sometimes find these online in various spots. So just go ahead and Google that and you'll find these. These are, these are good to have for uh, in your box to pull out every once in a while. All right, folks, thanks for watching. Again, please like, share, and subscribe. We definitely appreciate all the support on our guide business. We've been busier than ever, and we owe a lot of that to you guys who watch these videos and then come out and fish with us. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you soon. Have a good one. Buy zone on the Sound.